What do these researchers have in common? They are all outstanding scientists and have therefore been awarded funding by the DFG. As Germany's largest research funding organization, the DFG supports high-quality research projects, both as individual projects and within its coordinated programs, such as the Collaborative Research Centers and DFG Research Centers. The DFG's targeted funding begins with postgraduates, who work towards their doctorate in research training groups. One of them is working on nanotechnology. Why doesn't this gecko fall off the wall? Nanoscopic hairs on its feet allow it to stick to the surface. The fact that the tiniest particles can have amazing effects is also well known to researchers at the University of Erlangen-Nürnberg. These outstanding doctoral students are receiving funding for their research work through the DFG's Research Training Group program, which is especially designed to promote young researchers. Material scientists, bioengineers, chemists and other scientists are working hand in hand to develop the technology of the future. However, research on such tiny particles is complex and this is a new area in which there is still much to discover. A nanoparticle is so small that it's invisible to the naked eye. Just to give an example, 10 nanometers are to a gummy bear, which is about a centimeter tall, as the gummy bear is to Mount Everest. And the interesting thing about these nanoparticles, and about larger particles too, is that their properties, for instance their optical or electrical properties, are very dependent on their size. Wolfgang Poikat, head of the research training group, is convinced that extensive research in this area is worthwhile. The concept of nanotechnology can perhaps best be explained by taking Lego as an example. Small children play with Duplo, then, when they get a bit bigger, they play with ordinary Lego and older children play with Technic Lego. Researchers play with nanoparticles, which are even smaller building bricks. We are now able to build structures that are minute in size, finely detailed and with extremely interesting properties. In other words, we can design and make materials that were completely unimaginable just a few years ago. To allow basic research and applied science to benefit as much as possible from each other, science and industry are working together. An example of this joint collaboration is the Science to Business Center Nanotronics, which is run by Degusa, a specialty chemicals company. This partnership has been awarded approximately 2.4 million euros in funding by the DFG. The benefits are self-evident. The students can see right from the beginning how their research is actually turned into practical applications. But how does industry benefit from cooperation with the university? The benefits of this cooperative venture between the University of Erlangen and Degussa are that the university offers expertise in basic research, whereas Degussa's skills are more directed toward business development. This combination of skills significantly reduces the time it takes each project to reach market readiness. Through cooperation between science and business, the Science to Business Center aims to find new ways of developing products for the future. Nanotechnology will give us new products, such as illuminated wallpaper. At first we'll just have monochrome glowing wallpaper. Next we'll be able to have multicolored glowing wallpaper. And eventually we'll end up with something that's more like a large flexible TV screen. There's still some way to go until the researchers can turn that vision into reality. For research to progress unhindered, it must have adequate funding. In order to provide this, the DFG receives about 1.5 billion euros annually from the German federal and state governments. Of this total, about a quarter is spent on funding projects in engineering and the natural sciences, about a fifth on the humanities and social sciences, and just over a third on life sciences. 
the DFG places a strong emphasis on promoting young researchers, not only in the research training groups, but in other programs too. The Heinz Meyer Leibniz Prize, for instance, is awarded to young researchers for outstanding achievement. One young researcher who has been awarded this prize, as well as DFG funding through its individual grants program, is currently working in Bonn, looking into the effects that various allergens have on the human body. Strawberries come in all shapes and sizes, but they still taste best of all served on their own. But the patients who attend the allergy consultations at the University Hospital in Bonn aren't able to enjoy strawberries or certain other foods. The skin of patients with neurodermatitis overreacts to perfectly ordinary foods, which set off protective mechanisms that are normally meant to fight off infections. This overreaction makes the skin sensitive and results in totally innocuous substances causing unpleasant symptoms. One of the doctors taking care of these patients in Bonn is Dr. Natalia Novak. Neurodermatitis is a chronic inflammatory skin disease that affects about 30% of all children and about 10% of adults. We already know that there are certain cells in the skin which act as outposts for the immune system, and they play a key part in this reaction. The peculiar thing about neurodermatitis is that these cells on the skin surface have a kind of lock which allows them to take up allergens, such as those in strawberries. These allergens fit like a key in the lock, and this in turn activates the cells, which release certain chemical messengers that cause itching and eczema. The decisive question is, why do neurodermatitis patients have more of these docking cells than healthy persons? The theory is that certain segments of their DNA, which contain the genetic information for the formation of these sites, are to blame. The researchers are taking a closer look at this possibility. We take blood and skin samples from the patients so that we can isolate the DNA to allow us to obtain information on their genetic makeup. And the blood also enables us to obtain certain cells which we can reproduce in the test tube. For its work, the team needs a modern, well-equipped research lab. The money to pay for such resources comes primarily from the DFG's various funding programs. We're studying the patient's DNA, and the DNA is a bit like a rope ladder. The rungs of this rope ladder each consist of two bases, and what can happen is that some of these bases get mixed up, so that what you end up with is as if Mother Nature had knitted a knot in the ladder. This seems to be part of the root cause of neurodermatitis. The researchers in Bonn hope one day to develop an effective treatment for neurodermatitis. Natalia Novak also invested the 16,000 euros, which she was awarded as winner of the Heinz Meyer Leibniz Prize for Outstanding Young Researchers, in this project. We spent the prize money from the DFG on equipment that allows us to extract and measure the chemical messengers in very tiny quantities of liquid. If the researchers' project is successful, then perhaps one day soon, everyone will be able to enjoy strawberries again without suffering any side effects. Any researcher who holds a doctorate is eligible to submit funding proposals to the DFG. All proposals are initially received by the head office in Bonn. Each proposal is carefully reviewed in terms of its scientific quality, novelty and methodology. The DFG's program directors then pass the proposals to carefully selected experts for review. The proposals are subject to very strict selection criteria. Only the very best of the 20,000 or so received each year are awarded funding. More than half of them are rejected. Following the reviewer's recommendations, the assessments are then studied by review boards elected by the scientific research community. 
The joint committee then makes the final decision on how the funding is to be distributed. Sometimes the funding is literally worth its weight in gold. When we realized what we had just found, we looked at each other and said, oh my goodness, what do we do now with all this gold out here in the steppe, at the ends of the earth? Spectacular find is a success story of its own. The Siberian steppe, a vast and almost deserted landscape where peace and quiet reign. But there are exceptions. If such heavy arms are needed out here in the desolate steppe, then there's usually gold about. Lots of gold. And you'll often also find the archaeologist, Professor Hermann Patzinger. In 2001, here in Tuva, not far from the Mongolian border, he and his German-Russian team discovered a fabulous treasure, a grave from the time of the Scythians that hadn't been raided by grave robbers. For two and a half thousand years, this final resting place, created by the mysterious nomadic tribe, has been left untouched. As the president of the German Archaeological Institute in Berlin, his daily schedule is usually rather different. Well, when I'm here at my desk, I really miss the step, of course. There you don't have the day-to-day -day stress, constant emails, the telephone ringing all the time. You can simply concentrate on one research project, which is, of course, a researcher's dream. On the other hand, there are things in the step that I can live without, like the millions of mosquitoes that attack you, or when the generator breaks down and prevents you from using the computer, things like that. The constant threat to the gold from armed robbers is another part of everyday life. Sometimes the archaeologists themselves are even accused of being grave robbers. The excavation of a grave is in no way grave robbery. It's serious archaeology. And if it is pristine, then it's a fantastic find that can tell us a lot about the culture that we're looking at, about their funeral customs and rituals, and how they perceive the afterlife. However, that requires careful, precise recording of the details and scientific investigation. The discovery of this grave was a sensational archaeological find because, for the first time, it enabled us to document the burial of one of the highest-ranking members of the Scythians. It also allows us to reconstruct the burial itself and their concept of the afterlife. For instance, the inner walls of the tomb were covered in red felt carpet, and we've been able to glean a lot of details of the burial costume, all of which makes this culture really come back to life. In 1998, Hermann Patzinger became the first archaeologist to receive the highest German science award, a Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz Prize, which the DFG has awarded annually since 1986. With the prize money, Professor Patzinger was not only able to finance the excavation of this golden royal tomb, but it also enabled him to make another sensational find. The dig in Chicha was a genuine sensation because for the very first time in the West Siberian steppe, we discovered a settlement, a genuine town. This discovery was made possible by a technique called magnetic prospection, which revealed over a hundred houses located in various parts of the town. The excavations then revealed that different cultures lived in one place side by side, which is of course extremely interesting. Conditions at the excavation are no less multicultural than they were in the ancient town. Russian and German students live and work side by side, paid for with the DFG prize money. The discoveries in the steppe shed a whole new light on Scythian culture. Who knows what else lies in wait for the archaeologists to uncover? Hermann Patzinger is a scientist, and as president of the German Archaeological Institute, the DAI, is its main representative to the DFG. The involvement of top researchers and scientists in the DFG is fundamental to its functioning as the central self-governing organization of German science and research, whether in its statutory bodies, as reviewers, on review boards, or as committee members. The members of the Senate commissions play a very important role, 
as they are responsible for advising parliaments and public authorities on questions relating to science and research. They prepare statements on current scientific issues and topics, such as genetic engineering, stem cell research, experiments on animals, and protection in the workplace, thus giving politicians the ability to make scientifically informed policy decisions. Many scientists are also involved in another important area, communicating science to the general public. Science isn't always easy to comprehend at first sight. But this isn't the case at the Universum Science Center in Bremen. Here, complex topics are clearly explained using hands-on science. Amongst those ensuring that the subject matter is conveyed properly is Professor Gerold Weffer, the director of the DFG Research Center Ocean Margins, who is responsible for the scientific aspects of the project. For this and other similar projects, Professor Weffer was awarded the DFG's Communicator Award in 2001. The prize is awarded in recognition of excellence in communicating science to the general public. Communicating research findings to the public is one of the research center's main tasks, alongside science, which takes top priority, of course. It didn't all begin with the research center, though. We've always been actively involved in publicizing research, for example, by establishing the Universum Science Center. Even though communicating science is important to him, research takes top priority and the DFG Research Center provides the ideal conditions to attract the very best researchers from around the world. We try to attract the best people, to give them perspectives for the future and offer them good working conditions. This also means that we, of course, have state-of-the-art equipment necessary to carry out cutting-edge research. Professor Weffer is particularly proud of one of these high-tech pieces of equipment. The Quest is a very special vehicle which we have had for about the past two years. It allows us to dive to depths of up to 4,000 meters and take samples from the seabed, take photographs and video footage, and perform measurements. That gives us totally new opportunities on exploring the uncharted depths of the ocean. The Quest sets off on its expeditions to the ocean floor from the research vessel Meteor. Here and on other research vessels, scientists from many countries and a wide variety of disciplines cooperate in various projects, such as international research programs to extract cores from the seabed. The drill cores are brought to Bremen, one of only three storage centers of its kind in the world. Scientists from all over the world can obtain samples for example, to help solve the mystery of the disappearance of the dinosaurs. This is a real gem from our collection, showing the Cretaceous-Tertiary boundary. The meteorite impact coincided with the extinction of the dinosaurs. So you can put your finger here and pinpoint the moment a meteorite struck the Yucatan Peninsula 65 million years ago. As well as looking back into the past, researchers can also obtain insights into the climate of the future. There are currently about 82 kilometers of drill cores in storage in Bremen, and a few hundred meters are added to the collection with each new expedition. With this mass of raw research material added on a regular basis, there are doubtless many more exciting discoveries that will be made by future study of the cores. Internationality is becoming ever more important in a world that is becoming increasingly interconnected. Funding international contacts between scientists is therefore an important task of the DFG. All of the DFG's programs are open to researchers from abroad. And the DFG also has offices in Beijing, Moscow and Washington. Through its funding activities, the DFG ensures that excellent researchers are enabled to carry out internationally recognized research in Germany, now and in the future.